Casi toda la vida, eh, el, el huevo ha sido como una tradición. They found poachers with a turtle. The poachers attacked the group to keep away. That gang, their business was assault, was crime. Yikes. It's about 10 p.m. right now. Uh, we're going on patrol on the beaches here with the conservationists. Uh, it's kind of a finders keepers game going on here between them and the poachers. Whoever gets the eggs first uh, gets to do with them what they want. Here in Costa Rica, there's a rivalry on the beach that goes back over 50 years between conservationists patrolling to protect endangered sea turtle eggs and poachers who aim to eat the eggs or sell them on the local black market. Magali Marion of the conservation group Latin American Sea Turtles leads the patrol tonight for leatherbacks, the largest of the species. It's clear we're not alone on the beach. Magali gets an update from an earlier patrol, letting us know there are lots of poachers out tonight. The patrol that went out at 7 o'clock. Yeah. And uh, so I asked him if he saw anything, any activity on the beach. And there was a lot of poachers, so so far no turtle, and quite a lot of poachers are. A lot of poachers walking around. Yeah. Poaching is illegal in Costa Rica, but sea turtles have long been part of the culture and cuisine. After about an hour of searching, we find a leatherback sea turtle as it arrives on shore. So she just came up and she's starting to dig the body pit. We're just going to make sure that we're claiming the turtle by putting a stick in the track. Um, so whenever a poacher is coming, he knows that there's already somebody with the turtle and he's not even going to bother. He's just going to pass and carry on and that's it. The conservationists, who are mostly foreign volunteers and researchers, are greatly outnumbered by local poachers. Getting to an unclaimed nest first means everything. It seems like there's almost a mutual respect here that you and the poachers have for each other on this particular beach. Yeah, definitely. By not confronting, we're not antagonizing, so we keep the communication, we keep the dialogue open. During daytime, those same people that are stealing egg on the beach um, say hi, like, hi, how are you? Good weather today. You recognize them, you know them. Yeah. There's not much they can do for a living. I can't really blame them, you know? They need to eat like anyone. Is that someone walking over there? Mm-hmm. Poacher, probably. Yeah, definitely. There's actually a poacher walking by right now, so if we were maybe 20 or 30 minutes later uh, than we were, he would probably be getting those eggs. Magali's team prepares the nest to bring back to their camp where they will rebury the eggs in a hatchery safely out of reach from poachers. Even with this effort, only one in 1,000 will reach maturity. She's a big mama. Is she? Yeah. A nest like this can go for $100 on the black market, a significant prize in rural areas like Bacuare. Without law authorities around to enforce the ban on poaching, both groups rely on the unspoken agreement of the beach, finders keepers, to maintain the peace. Yeah, victory. This relationship is the status quo on most beaches in Costa Rica, which is why the country was shocked when a local conservationist was murdered in 2013, just miles down the coast from Pacuare. La falta de vigilancia de parte de la fuerza pública y el guardacostas de Limón convirtió en tierra fértil para la muerte la playa de Moín, en donde cinco hombres sorprendieron a cuatro mujeres y al conservacionista Jairo Mora Sandoval a quien asesinaron para dejar abandonado su cuerpo al lado del Suzuki Jimmy que conducía. The murder was a surprise for a country known as a safe, eco-friendly tourist destination. Volunteerism dropped sharply the year after the murder, a blow to both the reputation of Costa Rica and conservation efforts, which rely heavily on foreign volunteers. The incident also cast doubt on the decades-long peaceful relationship between conservationists and poachers. We went to meet with Carlos, a former poacher who is now employed by the volunteer camp in Pacuare, to discuss why locals harvest eggs and what has made the beaches more dangerous in certain areas. Is turtle poaching, turtle egg poaching, is it something that's been happening in this community for, for many years, for many generations? Does it, does it go back a long time? 
sí, de casi toda la vida, eh, el, el huevo ha sido como una tradición. Y vine aquí como, como un huevero a huevear. Uh, tomaba los huevos por, por, por comprar comida, por necesidad. Pero yo a mi consciente sabía que era un daño a las tortugas. Yo sí lo entiendo. Alguien tomó la iniciativa de hacer un proyecto acá en Pacuare. Me tomaron parecer a mí para ayudar a colaborar y, y yo acepté. Muy difícil porque la mayor parte de personas que no tienen trabajo y, y cogen los huevos por, por vender, otros por, por cambiarlos por drogas, pero hacen mucho daño a las tortugas. Sea turtles aren't the only ones lured to Costa Rica's untouched beaches. In recent years, the same pristine coastlines and untouched national parks enjoyed by wildlife and tourists alike, have also been the sites of major drug busts and violent crime. When did the drugs start playing such a big role in, in this? When did that sort of happen? Was that recently? Aproximadamente como unos 15 años. Pacuar no es tan peligroso. El, el, el problema es que la gente que viene eh, consume drogas, algunos, y ellos están muy, muy mal de la yeah. cabeza, y, y, pero no es tan peligroso como Moín. Es una playa, Moín es muy peligrosa porque hay acceso a una carretera hacia Limón y de Limón vienen muchas gentes uh, muy peligrosas. A few hours along the coast from Pacuare is Moín Beach, a turtle nesting hotspot and the site of Jairo's murder. It has a reputation as one of the most dangerous places in the country. We travel to the port city of Limón, right near Moín Beach, to follow the illegal turtle trade to the streets. We're headed to the market right now in Limón. Uh, we're going to see how easy it is to buy turtle eggs out there. Uh, it's actually illegal to sell turtle eggs in Costa Rica, but the government doesn't really enforce it. Uh, and we're going to go see how lax that enforcement is. Didier Chacon is the director of the Latin American Sea Turtle Conservation Group and has dedicated over 25 years to the protection and study of sea turtles in Costa Rica. He was also running the conservation group where Jairo volunteered prior to his murder. Didier takes us around Limón, where illegal turtle products are for sale out in the open. This is rings yeah. and brussels. So that's totally illegal turtle totally shells. Illegal. Okay. Yeah. We soon head to a bar where turtle eggs are usually sold. In the corner of the bar, a man with a cooler casually sells sea turtle eggs to anyone willing to pay. Sea turtle eggs are considered to be an aphrodisiac, which just adds to their demand and popularity. It's spicy. So yeah, that's how easy it is. We just bought four endangered sea turtle eggs in this bar within five minutes of sitting down. Viral. In some parts of the country, limited legal harvests are sanctioned by the government in an effort to control the black market. But generations of overharvesting and illegal trade have led to a serious decline in all sea turtle populations globally. Nearly all are endangered. We were able to buy turtle products quite easily. They were open for sale. Yes. I mean, is that black market a huge part of the reason why <coughs> yeah. this is still going on? Yeah, the 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 I mean, that's illegal, no? Yeah, it's illegal. You have the source and you have the market and many things in between. If you are strategic, you make your, uh, your actions against poachers, against hunters, 
and also in the market. And in between, you educate, you inform the society, not just patrolling every night. It's hard to change a cultural aspect. Yes, and it's, uh, it's deeply rooted in our culture yeah. also, yes, yes. But for the foreseeable future, the turtle egg black market isn't going away, which means monitoring the beach is the only way to combat the illegal trade. Because of the decline of volunteerism, Didier is one of the few people who still patrols Moyen Beach. Hola, señor. Now, Didier has to rely on private contractors as well as the police for the safety of his small conservation crews. The police, he says, need to be called continuously for support as poachers are not their first priority in an area known for crime and drugs. We sought out the police commissioner of Limon to ask him about his department's role in curbing the rampant turtle egg poaching. There's lots of issues here on this beach uh, with poachers, with other things, and we know that sometimes the police aren't really here that much. I mean, are there regular patrols? Are, are there active patrols really protecting the turtles? Desde hace 45 días mantenemos un monitoreo regular acá en la zona todas las noches. Hemos logrado detener a más de cuatro personas acá en esta zona que son presentados a las fiscalías correspondientes. We've heard, you know, people describe the bat like there's a battle here between conservationists and poachers. Do you see it that way, or is it more, is it calmer, is it more aggressive? Bueno, en Costa Rica todavía la permanencia de pantillas no ha sido detectada. Tenemos unas buenas políticas de prevención social que han mitigado este flagelo y ha permitido que Costa Rica no se han logrado desarrollar. Tenemos grupos aislados que son controlados con las leyes correspondientes acá en Costa Rica. A lot of people are still scared to come on this beach. Um, what, you know, what do you tell those people? Parte de la fuerza pública de Costa Rica invitarlos para que vengan a disfrutar de las maravillas que tiene el medio ambiente costarricense en un lugar en coordinación de seguridad y paz para que puedan disfrutar todas nuestras bellezas que están expuestas al mundo para disfrutar. While the police commissioner was essentially telling us that everything was safe on Moyne Beach, Didier got a disturbing message from one of his team members. What just happened? Um, when we were in the interview, yeah. the, our group comes out yeah. looking for turtles and they found poachers with a turtle. The poachers attacked the group to keep away. They sent me a message and I, I asked to the commissioner send a patrol to here. They find the group and now poachers care, but they are looking in, in the poachers in the bush. So as the police commissioner was telling us that the beach is safe, the guys that were trying to protect the turtles, the conservationists were attacked. It's, it's a perception, you know? While the attackers were still on the loose, a security patrol car ahead of us had driven into a trap, presumably set by poachers. So the, uh, the poachers have made a trap for this car. It's stuck. Uh, and we're trying to figure out how to get it out right now. Oh, wow, yeah. Damn. So they dug this, the poachers. Yeah, they, they made the hole to, yeah, they know that we used to this Is there trail it? to come to the beach. So they dig a hole and they cover it with They, a, dig, they dig the hole. Yeah, they, this is not the first, in the other... They do this all the time? Other night we, we had a, a chunks. They leave the, the, the trees, the log trees. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how they're gonna get this car out. Yikes. Attacks like this are common on Moyen Beach. In fact, Didier tells us that the police are there more to protect conservationists than to stop poaching. The night Haru was killed began with a trap just like this. You don't think Jairo's murder had to do with turtle poaching? I don't think. That gang, their business was assault, was crime. It's complicated because a lot of people have painted different pictures of Jairo. El asesinato de Jairo Mora sigue impune pese a que ya se realizó un juicio. Okay, be careful. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah.